beauty, the wonder of the area around me and just reflect a little bit on the lessons that might have for us in terms of how we spend our time with God. A few years ago, I was out in a beach woodland in Buckinghamshire with some friends. And because I'm a biologist, I, as we're walking, I just pointed out, do you notice there's very little vegetation, there's no grass, very few shrubs underneath the trees of a beach woodland. And just pointing out the fact that that's because of the acidity of the leaves that fall and so on. And they said something really interesting. They looked at it and said, actually, to be honest, we were just coming for a walk. We don't really see the trees and what's around. And I found that quite shocking. We all know the phrase, we can't see the wood for the trees. Well, this was taking it to a whole new level. They were going for a walk, but their objective was go, to go from A to B, and they were missing what was around them along the way. And I sometimes wonder, do we do exactly the same thing with God? that we go from A to B, or even do things journeying for God without actually spending the time engaging with him. This was brought home to me recently through an illustration that came from the BBC, of all places. I wonder if any of you watched the BBC Spring Watch programme this year. We tend to watch it most years, but because we're busy, we miss lots of them and we just catch it when we can. This year, we saw every episode. Of course, we were in lockdown, it was very different. But I think there were some lessons in that. I thought the BBC did a remarkable job. Firstly, they were very sensitive to the fact that some people are going through very difficult times. But then because of the lockdown and the restriction on social distancing, they couldn't have all the technical capability. They didn't have the big teams of technical folks that they would normally have. So each of the presenters presented more simply just the environment, the area around where they were at that moment. And the language that they used was quite interesting. They were all profuse in their praise and admiration of the wonder of the world that was around them. They all used one phrase in particular. They said, being out here is good for the soul. And they were absolutely right. Of course, it is good. It's good for the soul. There are actually some good reasons why that's the case, uh, which I won't go into now. But they sp used that interesting phrase, good for the soul. And they praised this wonderful creation about them. Sadly, they didn't quite make the final step of understanding to put together the creator, God, the one who had put all of this here. The reason why it was so wonderful, the reason why it has such an impact on us is it, the universe, all that's around us declares the glory of the Lord. So, a little later on one of the programs Chris Packham had uh, a leading role and he says something remarkable he's the person that normally doesn't do the main presenting himself he's the one that they always go to he's a kind of walking encyclopedia he's the king of facts but on this occasion he was one of those leading and pointing out things around his local area directly and he said on one day, he just enjoyed seeing what flowers, what plants had come up in this particular season. And on this day, it was honeysuckle. And he took a piece of honeysuckle and he said, do you know, I could tell you lots of interesting things about honeysuckle. It's an interesting plant and I could tell you lots of interesting facts about it. I could tell you that the white admiral butterfly lays its eggs on honeysuckle that a dormouse uses this to strip the bark away and line its nest. But he said, sometimes when it comes to nature, it's not about the facts. It is about engaging with that nature. And then he went on to hold the honeysuckle to his face and he said, just smell it. 
oh, the smell is just wonderful. And then more than that, and he pulled a little flower off and he said, if you get the flower at the very early stage, you can sometimes see a little bit of liquid at the end of the nectary. And if you put that in your mouth and taste it, ah, oh, the taste so sweet. The dopamine just flooding through your body makes you feel good. And as he said it, he reminded me of the Psalm, taste and see that the Lord is good. Sometimes in nature, it's not about the facts. It's about actually engaging with it. With God, it's just the same. You know, sometimes we can spend our lives seeking to learn things about God, about scripture, all things that are wonderful, that are good. But God doesn't just want us to know facts, he wants us to know him. I was thinking about the story of Mary and Martha. You remember Jesus arrived at their house in uh, Luke chapter 10 and Martha was busy working away trying to prepare to do the very best possible job she could to please her Lord. But it was Mary who chose to sit at Jesus' feet. She wanted to spend time in his presence and not just do things for him. I believe God delights when we offer ourselves to him. We can be really blessed and bless others when we serve him and when we uh, offer ourselves in his service in the kingdom. But you know what he wants more than our hands and our feet? He wants our time. He wants you. He wants you to spend time with him. And it's good to have knowledge about scripture, but you can rattle off all the kings of Judah and Israel and put them all in chronological order and, and that might be helpful at some stage, but it's not just about the facts, it's about engaging with God. I believe God wants us to engage with him every day. I believe he wants us to make our walk with him a constant relationship. I believe that he wants us to talk to him first thing in the morning, good morning Lord, it's me again. What do we do today? I believe the Lord longs for us to just spend time quietly with him. Not always learning huge facts and, and wonderful things from scripture, though there are many things there to learn and to be, to be engaged with, but he actually wants us to just hear his voice, to learn to sense what he's saying to us. I believe that as we walk down the street every day and we see things around us, he wants to know our thoughts on it. He wants to engage us to engage with him on those things. So as you're walking down the street and you see an elderly lady bending over, obviously in some difficulty, he wants us to be saying to him, Lord, I wonder what that lady's going through. How does she feel being so restricted in her movements? Lord, would you just bless her? You're engaging with him. When we sit at the meal table to recognize that he's provided what's on that table and say, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for all that you've given me. Oh, let's be a people who praise God, who engage with him, who just sense his presence everywhere at all times. I'm going to stop this for a moment because the train's about to go past. So our train's gone. But even that just illustrates something to me. So it went past, just thought to myself, who's on that train? I wonder what crisis some people on that train might be going through today. Whether someone has a health issue, maybe they're being bullied at work, maybe they're going to a job that they really hate. They know they've got to go home tonight to a family situation that's not good. How do we engage with God in the everyday and the ordinary? Well, we can just say, Lord, for those people on that train, I don't know who they are, but you know them. Lord, will you just bless them? Would you pour yourself into the lives of those individuals? 
If there are people around me whose lives are in crisis, will you just help me to see your heart for them and stand with them? I believe God wants us to engage with him, not just by knowing about him, but actually talking with him by sitting down and spending time as Mary did at his feet and learning to see what the heart of God is and just enjoying being with him as I am enjoying being out here in nature this morning, right now. I believe God's heart for us is that we do that with him constantly. So as we sit at the meal table to say, Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for what you've provided. Thank you for my home and all the good things. List the good and we engage with God and it brings delight to his heart as we do so. As we think about the people around us and we reflect on what some of them are going through and bring them before God, so we're engaging with him. As we make decisions about our homes, about our families, about our retirement, about our careers, about whatever else is going on, purchases we might make, places we may go to, to talk to the Lord along the way. So Lord, who are we gonna go and see today? Father, open my eyes to see your heart. That's engaging with God. And I believe that's what he wants for each of us. Taste and see that the Lord is good. As a final example from nature to make that point, I put together a few video clips of some of the natural world, even just in my back garden. There's a red kite that happened to fly over on the day when I chose to record from early morning to evening. It starts with the dawn chorus. It ends with a song thrush singing his heart out. And then the final clip is actually taken from night time, a couple of days earlier, and it's of a hedgehog in the garden. The riches of this world, if we will just look and see what there is there, oh, how much more with our God, who just longs that we don't just learn about him, but we engage with him.